Our next speaker is uh, Thomas Kolster. He is Danish and he is an international expert in sustainable communication and author of Good Advertising. He will offer the answer for you if it is possible to advertise in a positive manner. First of all, I want to say uh, a big thanks to Yubei Bay um, for inviting me here today. Uh, I'm super excited. And really, what an interesting question for Adam to pose. Will advertising still be around in 2025? And to be honest, I think it actually demands a lot of work for us to still be relevant as an advertising industry. I think we must probably be one of the only industries where most people actually don't like our products. I think that's uh, pretty curious, right? And that reminds me of a quote about Abraham Lincoln, who said, the best way to predict the future is to create the future. And today I've got a pretty big challenge up there on, 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 the, on the board, you know, how to win back consumer trust. And that's a big, big question to ask here today. But I'm not going to pretend that I can teach you a lot, because to be honest, most of you in here in this room are seasoned advertising professionals, marketeers, you know all about your business, you know all about your customers, and much more than I do. So the one thing that I actually want you to remember and remind you of is something that we all know, to be honest, and that is to be human to be ourselves, to ask questions like, you know, what do I like, what do I prefer, and try to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Adam talked about people power. I think too often we get stuck in this advertising cloud where we talk about consumers, we talk about target groups, we talk about employees, and if that's how we're going to talk about them, that's exactly how they're going to feel. So we need to change that language, and we need to change that mindset. And I think the answer is pretty simple. It's marketing by people. It's us in this room that creates it, and marketing for people. So I started out in advertising as a 21-year-old, young, aspiring copywriter. To be honest, probably um, the biggest reason I took the job was the paycheck. Um, a while in, um, I kind of started asking questions and really questioning the role and what I did in advertising. And today I'm on a mission to change advertising into something better. Um, I've done Draper for good of sorts. And I wrote a book called Good Advertising, so that's the, the little green book up there. And it's fundamentally asking, you know, can advertising be a force for good? Can brands be a force for good? So today I also work in the Good Advertising Agency, where we try to work with brands and even sometimes agencies to get them to understand this new reality. Or in other words, my mission is really, you know, we have made you buy shit, but can we make the world better too? Can we actually make and move brands from being part of the problem to part of the solution? And I think Adam talked about some of those problems. One of the questions that sparked my journey was a really, really simple one, and something I really want you all to reflect upon. And that is this simple question. So what value does advertising bring to your life? Some of you might have an answer straight away, but it's no simple question, really. Would we miss advertising if it wasn't there? I mean, this is not a question just as professionals. I mean, we are all pretty well paid, so I mean, there's at least some value. But I mean, what is the value of advertising, if you look at this, is how we receive it. What is that value? And I think for the most part, and that's probably the essential problem with advertising, that most of the part is a zero-sum game. I mean, where we as people lose out on the brands because they interrupt us, they steal our time, and most of the time that's the tactics that we're using. Really like this one. Stop whatever you're doing and pay attention to this ad. Damn it. Too soft. All. But the thing is, there is arguments. You know, what value does advertising bring? And I think, as somebody from an industry, I would say, of course, we bring more choices to consumers. Um, we bring information to consumers. So, of course, that could be 
one thing, but I think for the most part we really just feel more victimized. And I think, yes, information and choices made sense five, ten years ago, but today if you think about how you really purchase products, how many of you buy a new phone or new television without actually thinking about going to Google, maybe Googling a little bit, reading a little bit about it, maybe going into one of those bloggers or expert sites to read what do they think about it. And in that framework, for the most part, advertising kind of seems like a pretty biased sales pitch. Then there's another argument, and, and just looking at the methods, and I mean, Adam talked about um, ad blocker. Um, I don't know how many of you actually use ad blocker, and try to be honest right now. Can I see some hands up? Honesty, more hands maybe? No, okay, it's, it's pretty hard to see. So probably 10% of you and probably 15% of you are lying. But I mean, again, this is all about thinking about placing yourself in people's shoes. I mean, if we as advertising professionals, if we as marketing professionals use ad blocker, surely something must be wrong. And I mean, I bet that most of you, when you watch online videos, we're all looking at that pre-roll ad to stop. We just want to push that skip button. We just want to push that skip button. So we need to change that. An argument I often hear, and I believe in that, I come from the creative side of the business, advertising can be entertaining. And yes, I believe in that. I hope I've done some entertainment as well myself. But the problem is whether that is really enough. And I think today we're not the only ones who's doing entertainment. I mean, these figures is just uh, recently published by Google. So now 400 hours of content uploaded every minute. That's what we as advertisers are up against. So that's pretty hard competition. I mean, if you look at the world's biggest media company, Facebook, they don't have journalists, they have people like you and me probably posting photos from this stage, or stupid cast photos some of the time as well. So for us to move forward, I think we need to realize one thing. People don't like advertising. Let's, let's just move from that point, OK? And Honestly, don't kill the messenger, because I say it a nice way. If you look at how people actually say it online, it's much more cruel. Much more cruel. So, and, and the, the, one of the surveys that's been done recently by uh, We Are Social have actually looked at half of years' tweets about advertising. And I think it's quite interesting that two million of them are actually negative about advertising. Also see it as a possibility. There's still three million ones that are positive, so that at least something to build on. So how do we actually change those conversations? And I think advertising is changing so dramatically today. It's not only the messages we put out there, it's the whole experience. So one of the billion dollar questions I want you to reflect upon today is as well, do you actually deliver great consumer experiences? Can I see some hands up? Do you think you deliver great consumer experiences? Come on, I think you should be a bit more proud about the brands you're working for, hopefully, or the companies. It's, that's barely 10%. There are more people using ad blocker than they're proud about the industry they're working in. Not good. Have to work on that. Um, when we ask people who are honest about these sort of things, brands that are honest, 80% say that, yes, we do actually deliver great consumer experiences. But we would then ask people, it's only about 8%. So there's a big gap here again. And I think it has a lot to do with um, how we as brands behave. And again, if we look at how we most of the time are always making product the king rather than people the king. And in the words of Felisa, I think this is a pretty good example. I hate Dunkin' Donut commercials because they make their coffee sound delicious when in fact it's disgusting sludge. So where's the honesty? When do we start thinking like people? Why are we sitting with that pitch and looking at that coffee and saying, this is delicious coffee, because we know it's not true? The big problem here is that if we think about brands as people and relationships between people, because essentially that's what it is, what person do you want to be as a brand? I mean, most of the time, most brands behave like the exact guy you don't want to sit next to at a dinner table. The selfish prick that talks mostly about himself. So I want, what I want you to do is actually kind of get down from that brand pedestal and rather go down on eye level. And as Sandy said, don't talk, to pe don't talk at people, don't talk to people. 
And I think it's really, really, really that simple. And it's, it's, not, it's not an easy challenge to solve. I mean, this doesn't demand small incremental differences. This is not about moving, thinking about maybe you should move a little bit way more from programmatic, maybe you should move part of a TV budget more into digital. That's not the sort of uh, questions you need to ask. We need to think about people, and I think when I see brick brands still behaving like that prick, still pushing the messages out there, I think Adam had a pretty good slide about it, about the television. So you have Coca-Cola going out there and talking about the happiness factory, and now about taste the feeling. But for the most part, the thing is that story is being challenged increasingly, because most people don't look at Coca-Cola as the happiness factory, but probably more often the fat factory. And that gets them on the front cover of Bloomberg Business Week. So today, it's not only about a brand problem, it's a company problem. I really like that tagline, by the way. Would you believe I'm just big boned? So it's a different landscape. The story you're telling, the advertised story today, that's just the little tip of the iceberg. The interesting story is underneath the water level. You know, what does that product contain? Where is it made? How it is made? All that stuff really, really matters. And we need to change the conversation. I absolutely love this quote. Um, if you talk to people the way advertising to talk to people, they punch you in the face. So we need to change those conversations. I happen to be in, in um, Paris for the COP21. Um, in the introduction, um, they talked about sustainability. So I was there. And uh, an art group called Brand Vandalism actually took over 1,500 billboards, I guess to kind of represent people on how they think about advertising. So they made this mock advertising from Air France. So this is not a real advertising done by Air France, but by people. Tackling climate change, of course not, we're an airline. Air France, part of the problem. So we as brands are really challenged. But I think there's also an opportunity. When we talk about relationship, in most relationships, we don't get a second chance. But for some reason, we still have something to build on. Because when we actually ask people, they actually reach the hand out to you guys and say, you know, we want your help. 70% of people actually do believe that brands have a role to play, a bigger role than just plucking products. They want you guys and trust you guys to help solve bigger issues. Things like climate change, like unemployment, even things like obesity, jobs, job creation. So think about the possibility now, not talking about brands, but about what people care about, going down to that eye to eye level and start talking to people. And I think there's lots of conversations you guys can talk about that makes a difference. So let's just try to explore that for a little bit. So what I want to know is, and you just raise your hand, how many of you think about exercising more? Let me see your hands up. Who would like to exercise more? It's the first time I see so many hands up. You all look very, very good and slim and fit and all of that. Who of you worry about the Belgian economy? Some of you, okay. Who of you would worry about too much fat, sugar, or salt in your food? Quite a lot of people as well. Who thinks it's important to have a meaningful, purposeful job when you go to work every day? Cool. I think all of these hands represent a conversation, a meaningful conversation you can have with your clients about things that really, generally do matter. And I think those are the type of conversations that you guys should have with people. I mean, if you look at social media, there's research out there that says positive tweets are three times more likely to be shared. So people want you guys to engage in these types of conversations. But this is not only just about what advertising is today. I think it's also what advertising can be and the role that brands can take. I mean, when I started in advertising, I was taught in advertising school, I was taught radio, I was taught print, television, billboard, that was pretty much it. Today, there's so many different things that you guys can do. I'm going to show you an example from one company, Volvo, so that's kind of my sister country. We always have a thing going on with the Swedes, but this instant, I actually like them. They have pledged to, by 2020, that nobody should seriously 
be injured or killed in one of their cars. That's quite a big pledge. And one of the campaigns they turned out is this one. Nearly every day something almost happens. You've kind of got to be able to second guess the taxi in front of you or the pedestrians coming up. I end up getting nearly hit at least once a day. The young driver lost concentration and hit me from behind. I was extremely lucky that day. The doctor said that 95% of people that would have sustained those injuries would have been killed by them. We're on roads that were built really 100 years ago for far less traffic. In terms of cycling at night, I feel way less visible. Sometimes I choose not to cycle home at night. It's a lot more dangerous. other reflective products on the market. When you apply it to the surface, the reflective particles will stick together with a special adhesive, making the spray invisible by day, but light up at night in the glare of headlights. Volvo is renowned for its safety innovations. Nice paint takes the principle of our 2020 vision, protecting passengers inside the car to protect those outside too. I think you've just got to be as visible as you can, and that's the good thing about life paint, is it makes it very hard for you to be missed. Putting something on that will make you scream out to drivers like me is a fantastic thing. I think cycle safety in London is not all about bicycles, it's about cars, it's about pedestrians, it's about sharing the road with other users. So it's great that a car brand has got involved to essentially help cyclists and help drivers in the end and save lives. So this is essentially a company that I think really answers the question, what value does advertising bring to my life? Pretty, pretty well. That actually dares to solve some of those things that are so well connected to what that brand is all about. And I think instead of us just keep repeating the same messages and the sale pitches, the only thing that's going to happen is people are going to go try out of this. But I think if we actually start to solve things in people's lives and make a difference in their lives, I think that's where there's some beef. So, also in terms of what actually works out there, we heard Adam talk about emotions. But most of the time, when we try to sell, we appeal with rational arguments. And I think, why does some of this stuff really work? I mean, most of the time, we're this, you know, we're always trying to say it, sell to people. And if you sell to people, they'll treat you like a sales guy. We need to show care. And, and why does that work? Why does that approach work? It really does work because this is a brain. So, and if we look at the brain and how that, most of the time, the messages that we try to use goes towards the neocortex. So that's where logic and reason, that's where that is placed. But actually, the oldest part of our brain, the limbic brain, there's a little piece in that brain that's called the amygdala. And that's where all our emotions are. Happiness, joy, sorrow, but it's also the place where decision-making is taking place. So most of the time, why we don't always have a really kind of rational answer for whether we like something or we like a brand or not, it's because it takes place there. And the tricky part of that brain is that it doesn't have a capacity for language. So do actually think about how you can use emotions and how you can change away from being, having a ra rational approach. One of the brands I really want to applaud for that is actually uh, a PD company always. I mean, PD is probably one of the marketeers that always were doing these very, very rational messages. You know, you've all seen these doctors doing their experiments with the blue ink and all that stuff. 
But suddenly they changed in quite a different direction. So going from these very functional messages into something new, and I'm sure that quite a few have seen it uh, like a girl, but let's just use um, a minute to kind of re-see it. Hi, Erin. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to just give you some actions to do. I just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. My hair. Oh my Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota, and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. Is like a girl a good thing? I actually don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time they're already trying to figure themselves out and when somebody says you hit like a girl it's like well what does that mean because they think they're a strong person it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them and what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl kick like a girl hit like a girl swing like a girl keep doing it because it's working if somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, if you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl and I swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Yeah. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? Great, so I think you all uh, agree that emotion seems to be working pretty well. I think I heard some laughter, and even I've seen it probably a hundred times, and I still absolutely love re-watching it again and again. Um, Yube actually did a little ma magazine, a little survey uh, for this conference, um, asking uh, if emotions play a role here in Belgium, and if emotional brands are important, and 72% out of the 350 people that were asked said, Yes, so emotions is a key thing. So one thing is, of course, putting out your voice message and promoting um, 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 or making young girls more confident and taking part of those conversations, and PNT really succeeded doing that. 80 million people saw the video, but probably more importantly, all the social media discussions that were going on. But this is bigger than that, and I don't know how many of you know who this guy is, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks. And what is he doing on Time Magazine? He's on Time Magazine because what Starbucks know about America. And it seems to be that Starbucks knows a lot about America, about education, about vets, about homelessness. So this is a brand that just not only put marketing out there, but actually living the values. And probably quite a few of you have followed uh, Unilever, the whole Paul Pullman thing. 
But I think the important thing right now is that, I don't know how many of you were in Can Lions, but Keith Weed went on stage and talked about this is actually for once paying off. Today, Unilever's brands make up half the revenue, and the sustainable brands grow twice as fast. So there is, I think, somewhere a solution if we can answer that big one question, what value does advertising bring? And if you guys are bold enough to actually do it. So my approach with advertising is really a simple equation. It's really saying that if you do good for people and planet, it will also be good for brand and bottom line. It's very, very simple. But as I said, this is no incremental change because it changes our model. Because traditionally, we have made people want things, even stupid things. To be honest, Kellogg's Cocoa Pops, putting that little cute monkey on there. Do you know the sugar content? It's the same sugar content as this Mars bar. That's not the stuff that I went into in my industry to do. We need to do stuff that people need. So I'm going to give you three quick good advertising hacks. There's lots of them, but these are the three ones that we have time for. Actually not. So I'm first going to talk very, very quickly about why this matters. This is a survey from uh, Accenture. They looked at the five global megatrends that are going to shape our future, the next 30 years. Climate change and resource scarcity. You guys can do something about it. Demographic and social change. Japan, Eritrea is 67. Nigeria, it's 19. Hospitals in one part of the world, education in another part of the world. Shift in economic power. What does that mean? For those of you who work for global brands, more and more consumers, how are we going to deal with that? Rapid urbanization, big problem. I mean, always when I'm in Brussels, I always get annoyed by all these congested roads. I mean, Volvo is at least doing something about it. Digitalization, I mean, that's probably a different conference. We've got to talk about that. So fundamentally, everything we know about business is changing. And I mean, you guys have probably heard all about the fourth revolution, how the digital world is morphing with the physical world and the biological world, and those type of new companies that emerge. The interesting thing from a marketing perspective is that the stuff that people expect from peer-to-peer -peer platforms, from crowdsourcing platforms, from the sharing economy, they're starting to expect from you guys. And the average age of companies is dropping. In 1920, it was 75 years. Today, it's 14. So we need to do something about it. And a lot of the brands here um, are new brands. A lot of them you probably don't know, Lyft, Airbnb. But the fundamental model that is changing is the empowerment of people. And I mean, let's just quickly look at Airbnb as an example. Um, on the one hand, I'm a uh, customer. Uh, I go into a place in Spain, I rent the apartment. But on the other hand, I also get value back from Airbnb. So that's a completely different way that actually respects people and that's empowering people. So it seems like we have uh, not enough time for the three good advertising hacks. That's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to run through them very quickly. Empower people, don't enslave them. Inspire to better, more meaningful lives. Like Apple have created this health app. Third one, look for opportunities to create value instead of interruption. BMW moved from being a uh, company plucking cars to actually coming up with transport solutions like the BMW i program. So probably you, a lot of you sit in here and says, my company doesn't have any purpose. What should I do? We, we're not born with a purpose. But I think my main point here today is you don't need to be born with a purpose, but you have the ability to stand up for change and actually really creating some value in people's lives. I did that. I changed my career seven years in, and now I'm championing a different model of advertising. I think what we're doing right now is insane. And Albert Einstein talked about insanity as repeating the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting a different outcome. So I think it's about time that we change the model, and we change the model from advertising into good advertising. So thank you so much, and I wish I had a bit more time. Thank you. <laughs>